Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 29 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. And this time we're doing version two of Grace Point Church for a local church, which is in Valdosta, Georgia. So how I organize a digital marketing strategy, the six steps are listed here. We're gonna walk through each of the six to give you some idea. Now, the research is the first step and these are unresearched examples, so keep that in mind. But the point for me of the research step is putting together a SWOT chart, strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats specific to that brand. And what we're using the SWOT chart to do is to educate the decisions of the operator for the business. So the first question that we help them answer is what's the goal of the strategy? followed by what's the customer point of view it's always going to be singular and don't think so much as far as you know age and race and sex of that person think more about what's important to them what what do they prioritize on their typical day-to-day -day or when they might interact with the brand what are they thinking and seeing and feeling and doing number four is the pressing problem that that customer point of view is dealing with. So some of the questions, as well as a couple of the reports that will go into me putting together a SWOT chart, keep in mind, it's always going to be specific to the unique context of the business that we're talking about individually each time. So, you know, there could be other stuff, there could be lead, it just depends. So here is an example, just kind of give you some understanding as far as what I'm talking about when I say a SWOT chart, right? So the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And the idea isn't just to throw a bunch of stuff onto the chart and fill it up, so to speak. It's to, during research, discover insights while you're doing the research and you're putting those insights on the board. So as you look at all the stakeholders and look at the environment, et cetera, then you're just taking insights and putting those onto the board so that you, it will help educate decision-making going forward. So the goal for this specific strategy is to make Grace Point Valdosta a web church. So how would that play out? And what's the customer point of view for doing that? Well, it really boils down to people, humans, that are seeking God's grace forward slash a church, right? So if they're in the local Valdosta area or if they're anywhere in the English speaking world with internet connection, that's the idea. That's kind of the thinking. The pressing problem is church services still are largely a brick and mortar experience. And the idea being that's not always possible and it's not always required as well. And especially if people are well away from the geographic region, but they still are, maybe they used to, they grew up in the church and they moved away or, you know, whatever. So, they kind of they identify with the heart of the church well allowing them now to take geography out of the equation and every sunday morning come along for the service right so the digital foundation is where that's the second step and it's where all of the digital marketing happens in my mind so the website itself is the the foundation the fundamental foundation of this strategy and keep in mind, the way that I look at the website is the homepage of the website, I consider it the front door to the business, okay? So that front door, and then you can have as many different pages off of that as you want, but you wanna start with that homepage and go from there. So the second part is the online giving aspect so that it's through the website, people can actually go and you know join in and watch the live stream but at the same time, if they want to make a donation or if they want to set up an ongoing tithe and offering, they're able to do that and make it as simple as humanly possible is the idea, right? And then lastly is you want to put the media archive up. So you're live streaming each of these sermons. You want to store all of that media on land that the church itself owns, right? So the website, we start with it, and here is a working demo that I've thrown together. And the way that it's set up is really simple. The idea behind this 
is to live stream on Sunday mornings and then otherwise through the week when people land here, they're able to view the, the most recent sermon. And then they also have a shortcut, obviously, to the archive of sermons would be my thinking. And then the way that I build websites that I've learned over the past or I've taught myself over the past 12 years is I started from the home page just to keep it simple. You can add as many pages and posts, etc. beyond that as you'd like billions literally however i start with the genesis child theme i use essence pro it allows me to keep it super simple when i'm putting together the home pages so i can focus on the message and then i'm going to deploy the message of the home page as well as any your know, tools that are there and i'm going to do all that through a couple of win widget areas and then Beyond that, the only other part that I need before I can declare it as a functioning, good quality website is navigation menus, top and bottom, and making sure that each of those pages in the menu is actually populated, right? So as far as the online giving, I would use givewp.com. It's like 360 a year, and it allows you to make it just super duper simple for people to make donations, right? And so all they have to do is put their email address, verify their email address, and they have an account to start doing tithes and offering. So the media archive, I just put all three together, right? So the video, the audio, the written, and the images, they're all going to be archived on the actual website, and they're gonna be easily accessible from the homepage, right? So audience is the third step, and I focus on three parts, the media plan, the creation process for the media that this brand's going to do, and then the distribution plan as well. So starting with the media plan, in this instance, the audience point of view, and again, this is unresearched, is people seeking God's grace. So you have Grace Point Valdosta, I would lean into the grace part, right? The show strategy to begin with, now keep in mind, this is on research and I would consider this a phase one. There would be other stuff to add later, but to begin with, I would start with the Sunday morning sermon. Get that to where every Sunday it's being streamed live and you're also taking a copy of that recording and putting it out as a podcast, as well as taking the video version and putting it on the website as part of the archive, but also putting it out to various sites online as far as social media, et cetera, in order to put more eyeballs on it, distribute it. So the media creation process, the in-house media roles and responsibilities, and again, this is completely unresearched, but it really does just boil down to two parts for the first phase. You don't need an editor for the video or any of that for the first phase, but you would almost definitely need it for future phases in my mind. But you can always you outsource that. There's a lot of different ways that you can approach it. So in-house to begin with, say the administrative pastor and or the media person for the church. And you know, there's always someone that's running the microphones and you know so forth. So that person and or the admin pastor would one of them would run the video live stream each Sunday, right? And all that you have to have to do the live stream is you could use a phone. You can always go through. There's just so many different options depending on what you want to use. I would go with Ecamm Live. That's what I actually use. It lets you automatically stream live to YouTube or Facebook or there's a bunch of different options. So that's what I would start. And then all you need is a Mac, you know, laptop or whatever. And from you have a camera that's attached to it. To make sure that the Mac is online and you're using Ecamm Live, that app on the actual laptop, then you're up and running, you know, and then each Sunday, obviously, you do the same thing. So the I would publish a copy of the video to the church website, distribute a copy of the video to the Internet, and then I use the video to promote the next Sunday as well. So the lead pastor in this instance for the first phase, I mean, they playing their typical Sunday sermon. <laughs> you know, there's no change, right? So we're really, we're adding a little bit to the admin pastor slash media person, but a lot of that could easily be outsourced. Now the example deliverables list, each Sunday AM sermon live stream, that is the actual flagship. And then from that, we're going to want additional deliverables, but keeping it very simple to begin with, 
I would start with an audio version over to anchor.fm and that way they can send the podcast automatically to like 11 different podcasting platforms. I would send a copy of the video to their website and to YouTube in addition, and I would be assuming that because they have a pretty active Facebook page, I would be assuming that's where they would be live streaming using Ecamp Live. So 3.3, the media distribution, the, it's a high bar, but the bar that I set for it is you want to give the people what they want. You want to do it where they want it and how they want it. And you want to do it every time they want it, right? And the way that I approach that is every time I create a video so that I can then extract an audio and a written version. The video I put to Wistia for embedding on my actual website. And then beyond that, you can upload natively to Facebook and to YouTube. And in this instance, they would actually be live streaming, and this is on research, but tentatively, they would live stream through their Facebook brand page, and then they would download a copy of that video each week, and then they would extract the audio to put over and, you know, they can maybe have somebody do light editing on the copy if they like and any number of options. And then I definitely would add a YouTube channel for them as far as for the web church. Audio, like I said before, anchor.fm, written in images, I'd run it all through the blog. So the prospects is the fourth step. And in this part, I covered the digital offer and the customer attention life cycle, and we'll go through both. So the offer, it starts with the solution in the four P's of marketing from the old industrial area, like I was taught when I got my degree in marketing with honors from Valdosta State University in Valdosta, Georgia. I learned solution access, value, and education from Greg Ciotti on the Help Scout blog years ago. In this instance, the solution would be the web church experience obviously through the website. As far as for the access, it's just the homepage of the website to begin with. Everyone, bring everyone through the front door, kind of, right? And then, you know, obviously, it's it's not a replacement for the brick and mortar, enhancing it is the idea. The value is you want people being able to find friction-free access to be an active part of the church, regardless of geography. That's kind of the first question, the first hurdle to overcome. Education, the messaging philosophy, if you will, that I would go with what their tagline is typically already, which is experience an atmosphere of love and acceptance and grace. And the customer attention life cycle, everybody starts out as a stranger. In this instance, at some point, Grace Point Von Osta is going to come across another human's radar. So if they're seeking grace, they're seeking a church, now they're a qualified prospect. And then ideally, obviously, they're able to start having more people frequent the church in real life brick and mortar. But also, now they have a certain amount every week that shows up for the live stream as well to you know live stream it. The customers, that's the the fifth step, and in this instance, obviously, it's the members, right? I mean, we're not talking about people actually buying stuff from the church. We're talking about the members and the, the volunteers and the elders and you know, so forth. So here, we're talking through the customer conversation. And in my mind, would run through the live chat and email. I'd add that in to what they already have at brick and mortar and by phone. And then the other thing that I really like about using Drift for live chat and email is that it makes video meetings super easy to add in as well. So, and I'll use Zoom for those. And you can typically get away with a free account for quite a while, if not ongoing. So the customer feedback loop, the idea is that we're going to email people that have visited the church. And this, in my mind, this would include people who only live stream it then, but they decide to give their email address as far as for like a, a visitor information packet or something, right? Like they would do in real life. And then from there, once you do it, is the people that give their email address, you touch base with them every six months, a year, depending on what you want to do. But the idea would be that the people that reply to the question, and it's a one to 10 question, how likely are you to share Grace Point Valdosta or this local church with other people? And if they reply a one to eight, it puts them into what I refer to as a customer service queue. And then the nine and 10 replies are thanked and invited to share their thoughts publicly. So the campaigns is the sixth step. 
three types of campaigns that I typically divide them up into. Get attention, keep attention, and administrative. And getting attention is talking to strangers, starting to kind of consider the top of funnel, I guess. And then the keeping attention, that's more the, <laughs> the bottom of funnel. And then the administrative is the funnel integrity itself. So as far as getting attention, let's do an example of each. So the first one I would do is break the ice. And what I want to do is to introduce the web church as an option from Grace Point Valdosta, right? So that if people in the Valdosta area want to come and be a part of it, you know, then in the brick and mortar, then awesome. And if otherwise, we want everyone else to tune into the live stream would be my thinking. And that would be the whole drive behind this would just be to get more eyeballs on the live stream and obviously you're you're simultaneously touting the actual sermon at the congregation as far as for the church right and all right so the keep attention example well i should have changed that obviously i didn't so as far as the keep attention the two-way conversation i would just continue the ongoing they email everybody the quick news is what they call it every wednesday so i would just continue that i mean that's kind of a two the two-way conversation it's just now they would have more of the digital the web church stuff to talk about as far as you know, just you would want to make sure that you invited everybody to the live stream every time that you sent that right just like they already invite people to go and listen to the audio podcast because They've been doing that with my help for years as far as putting out a podcast. So 6.3 administrative part, an example would be local citations. And it's a local church. Obviously, we're talking about a web church as far as this strategy. But for the brick and mortar side, it's not like that. Like I said, it's not a replacement for it. So what I would do is I would invest in brightlocal.com to make sure that for Grace Point Valdosta, you can use the local citation building service and the data aggregator submissions. And the way that works out to is for two to five bucks per profile, Bright Local will allow you to put all your information and they tell you all the stuff that they need. You give it all to them. And then they go out and scrape the internet and they say, okay, here are all the profiles that we know of. And here is, you know, all these profiles, you're not showing up at all. These are showing up and it's perfect. These are showing up and it, there's broken, you know, they have the wrong name or whatever, right? And so they tell you that. And then for two to five bucks per profile, they'll either go and get your information added to it if it wasn't showing up at all and they'll tell you these are specifically helpful for a church right or these are helpful for a local accounting firm or whatever your specific industry might be if you were to want to do this yourself the diy investment the biggest part is the 360 a year for the give wp but you definitely want that because the recurring tithes and offering it's just going to be so so simple for people as opposed to they have to show up at the brick and mortar every week or mail in a check right now they can pay with their card they can set it up and just make it simple keep it secure etc 39 bucks a month for liquid web i would start there you're probably going to be around 30 bucks a month for liquidweb.com for the managed wordpress hosting you don't wouldn't need the woocommerce if you're going to use the give wp option 100 bucks a month for wistia for the video hosting on the actual website which i definitely would do drift.com that's for two live chat operators and email and gatherup.com for the customer feedback loop Yoast for the premium SEO plugin so that as you're putting the different sermons up, you're able to have search engines understand what it is and connect people with it that are looking for, you know, grace and different the different topics of each of the different sermons, right? Wistia.com for the soapbox. You may not need it, but I would definitely get it because you could easily use soapbox for your different pastors you could also use it for the people that are running the the cell groups or whatever the the um, community groups i think that they're called at grace point because it's just presentation it like i'm using it right now to record this and then uh, five bucks per month per employee for g suite just so that everybody on staff can all have you know, at grace point .com email addresses as well as the docs and slides, and there's a ton of stuff that comes with G Suite. 
if you have questions, my email, or you can feel free to give me a call or text. As far as what's next, Monday, January 28th, we're going to have example 30 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy available. All right, have a great day. See you Monday. Have a great weekend.